how's it going, everybody? It's R.C. Maxfield here for the Back to 12 podcast. And Texas Tech football had some breaking news yesterday that we have to discuss here on the channel. But before we get into that, be sure to like the video. Get that comment section going. Let me know where you guys are watching from. And then most importantly, if you haven't already, be sure to hit that subscribe button. And in today's live, we'll have a QA and a at the very end. We can talk some Texas Tech hoops. But this one, well... It'll prioritize Texas Tech football as they will be looking for a new offensive line coach, as in Texas Tech alum, Stephen Hamby, the offensive line coach, will not return in 2024. That was announced by the university. Don Williams of the Lubbock Avalanche Journal actually reported it first. We'll get into the nitty gritty of that. And then, hey, we'll look at a way too early, too deep roster projection, just strictly for the offensive line for the Red Raiders going into 2024. One more time, be sure to like the video and let me know where you're watching from in the comments and I might as well get this started off because this was interesting. I thought it was weird timing, if I'm being honest about it, in the sense of when this came down, but with more information coming out, much like most of anything in life, once you get more information and you wait a little while to get that said information, things start to make more sense. And that's exactly what happened here with Coach Stephen Hamby out as the offensive line coach for the Red Raiders going into 2024. Now, for those that don't know, he was an offensive lineman for the Red Raiders in the Mike Leach era from the 05 to 08 season, was actually a captain in the starting center for the Red Raiders. Now, Hamby was terminated without pause. That is coming from the Lubbock Avalanche Journal. Again, Don Williams was the first one that reported on this. They actually are reporting that Tech must pay him 70% of the remaining value of his deal in monthly installments beginning a month from his termination date, so starting on March 5th. Now, it's interesting because of this little nugget that they had in their article as well. Hamby was set to make $330,000 in 2024, the second year of his deal. He was currently in a two-year deal with Texas Tech. Year two of the contract started last week and the buyout went down precipitously due to that. So it feels like Texas Tech was waiting for that contract to start and then to go after another offensive line coach. Now, do they have somebody in the weeds in terms of, hey, we've got, you know, our eyes set on that guy? CBD at this point. But I do think it's interesting from the standpoint of this. We've talked about it on this channel at nauseum, it feels like, in the sense of, what did Texas Tech have to get better at going into 2024? I, I think everybody in the comments knows there was two positions specifically on offense they had to get better at. It was offensive line and wide receiver. Now they've got drastically more talent in the wide receiver group, and you think that the offensive line will be improved going into 2024. Now, I had somebody on Twitter mention this, and I thought it was a really good point in the sense of in college football, when coaches are let go, right, there's a reason for that. And they brought this up, and I thought it was a great point. I want to give credit. It was from Robert Powell at RP Texan. He says, it's been said that coaching changes are all about recruiting, not their coaching ability. How does that fit here, and what are your opinions of the change? First and foremost, I don't like seeing anybody get fired. I don't think anybody does. But. I will say this. I don't think there was really anybody on the offensive line that got a ton better during the time that Hamby was there. And that's not a shot at him. I just, you know, hey, things happen, right? And players respond to coaches differently. Think Different things work for different players. I think when you look at Texas Tech in the current landscape of their offensive line, and we'll look at that a little bit more here in depth in terms of just how many offensive linemen they have on the roster and who I have projected in the too deep in the way too early 2024 too deep. I think I can say this in the standpoint of Hamby was liked in the building. I had numerous coaches tell me that. There's no doubt about that. But I think from the standpoint of they wanted to go out and they wanted to make sure that this issue that they had on the offensive line was not only addressed from a talent perspective, which if you look at their transfer portal class and the guys they have in the high school ranks from really every recruiting class Joey McGuire has had at Texas Tech, they've definitely addressed the offensive line. That said, the offensive line is the hardest, and I mean the absolute hardest thing to coach up because it takes the longest time to get there. 
It really does. You can have multiple four-star guys. You can have a five-star even mixed in there if you want. It doesn't mean that they're going to be ready right away. Those are few and far between at the collegiate level. So you have to coach these guys up. And not to mention the system is vitally important as well. I think when it comes down to it, Texas Tech just needed to have a new voice. They've got some new talent in there as well with some returnees that we'll talk about here in a little bit, mainly led by Caleb Rogers, one of the captains for the Red Raiders. Overall, it's not a shocking move. I don't think anybody's really shocked by this, um, nor should they be. But this is modern college football in the sense of if you don't get it done quick, you're not going to be around long. And rightly or wrongly, that's just kind of how it is. Um, but yeah, I mean, that's really what it is right now for Texas Tech. I, I thought really the most interesting aspect was the timing of it more than anything, just for the sheer standpoint of you're so far along. I mean, National Signing Day is really right now, like the old National Signing Day, early National Signing Day is the one that really matters now. But old National Signing Day is this week, and now you're looking for an offensive line coach. It makes me think that they had somebody in mind and this could happen relatively quick. Or maybe they're going to do an exhaustive search and actually go out there and look at some names. I've heard some people throw out Caster, the former center for Texas Tech that played during the Cliff Kingsbury era, who is also an offensive line coach right now at Utah. Maybe they go that direction. I think they'll go more the experienced route, if you ask me. But I think Joey McGuire and his connections in the state of Texas could lead him in the direction of that more experienced hire, whether that's at the university level or maybe they even go out and get somebody from the high school ranks at a very good high school. I mean, really what it comes down to, I think when you look at everything, it's just, hey, like, take a step back, realize what Texas Tech had to get better at. They addressed it in the portal, addressed it in high school recruiting, but sometimes you just need to go out and get a new voice. And I think that's kind of the situation of what Texas Tech is in. I think Hamby's a solid coach. I don't think anybody would disagree with that. But sometimes you need a change, and I think that that was one of those times right now. We got Ty in the chat. He says, uh, and then we got, I like your joke in the chat as well. Thank you. I haven't joked yet. Um, just give me a second, though. Uh, we got Ferg 806 in here, and then we've got Ty saying this. Here for all the info listening in while I eat and energizing before we beat the brakes off Baylor. Always one of the first to like your videos. Always keep my eyes peeled for the basketball info. I appreciate that, Ty. Um, better yet, he says, the tech info. I appreciate that. We'll have uh, some big announcements here on the channel in the not-too-distant future, so a little tease there. Um, won't be in today's video, so you're going to have to subscribe and like the videos to keep it on your feed here on YouTube, but we've got some big things coming here on the Back to 12 podcast channel. Now, I wanted to really kind of talk about the broader offensive line group in today's life because I don't think – there's a position that is more important for Texas Tech in 2024, even more so than really the quarterback for the sheer standpoint of, yes, I understand if Baron Morton gets hurt, you're talking about Jake Strong starting um, as a sophomore, or you're talking about Will Hammond as a freshman, a true freshman at that. You got to protect the quarterback, man. And Texas Tech has been, let's just call a spade a spade, really fucking bad at it. I mean, they've just been really bad at it for multitude of years now, or multiple years now, I should say. And so I'm just going to put up all of the names here in just a second. But before I do, let me know in the chat, your one word for Texas Tech announcing Coach Hamby will not be back in 2024. Let me know in the comments. I know that there's a lot of people in here right now. And while you're at it, while you're leaving that comment, like the video, subscribe if you haven't already. We're giving you daily videos here, not only shorts, but long videos as well on the latest Texas Tech football and Texas Tech men's basketball news. So stay in the know right here on a 100% free channel. All you have to do, like the video, hit that subscribe button, and uh, get the chat going right now and like the video. Come on. All right. Let's get into this in terms of the names on the offensive line for Texas Tech. They're going to be on the bottom of your screen. I'm going to run through them because you're going to notice a theme here. There's quite a bit of young guys. I mean, quite a bit of young guys. You got Tanner Allen, sophomore, Ty Buchanan. We'll talk about him here in a little bit. He's a junior. You got Caden Carr, redshirt freshman. You got Davon Carter, Memphis transfer. He's a super senior. Then you got Nick Fatigue. You got him as a redshirt freshman. You got Holton Hendricks, freshman. Jackson Hildebrand, freshman. You got Lofton, sophomore, long, freshman. Merriman, junior, redshirt freshman for Morphus. Then you got uh, Bonson, freshman. Not to mention, 
You got another couple of freshmen down there and Shaw and Sill. Then you've got Wilson as a sophomore. You're young. That's the thing. And Texas Tech really prioritized the offensive line. And I understand the frustration and the sheer standpoint of this. Like, hey, man, like you can't go fix it in the portal and you can't fix it right away in the sense of if you want these young guys that are highly regarded dudes, right? We're talking about the four stars of the world, the high three stars, guys that could be building blocks for Texas Tech football in the trenches on the offensive side moving forward. You got to allow them to develop. And I know that that's frustrating. So you have to go out and you have to get guys like Carter. You have to go out and get guys like Porcher, go, guys like Scurry, guys like Rodriguez that are older in terms of you know upperclassmen, juniors, seniors, even super seniors in some cases, to really just plug in those holes for a season to allow another year of development for these guys coming in, like the Ellis Davises of the world, the Holden Hendricks of the world, right? You got Nick in there as well. You've got Carr. You've got multiple guys that I think can be really, really good offensive linemen for Texas Tech moving forward. But the thing is, is this. It takes time to develop. And so that's why you've got these guys from the standpoint of so many dudes that I think, yeah, they're going to be in competition to potentially play meaningful snaps for the Red Raiders. I mean, we'll talk about it here in just a minute. I think left tackles wide the hell open. I don't know about you guys, but that's one thing that I am looking at. I think left tackle is wide open. I think there's two, three, maybe even four guys that could compete for that, not only in the spring, but also in fall camp. Now, let me get to some of your comments real quick. We got Oliver. Every coach beside Hamby is returning for next season, right? Yes, that is correct. As of right now, every coach is returning for Texas Tech outside of Hamby. So that is a uh, very good info right there, Oliver. Thank you for uh, asking that question. Uh, this is from T. Ferg. Uh, Yo, RC, does making an offensive line coach switch slash hire at a time um, – a plethora of new players who will have to have a new coach. Is that really worth not just keeping what you have? I hear you, but I mean, it's one of those deals where they really haven't got to be around Hamby in the sense of there's so many NCAA rules that really restrict how often coaches can be around players. Really the most important person on a coaching staff in a lot of ways is your strength coach. And so the strength coach has been around more than the coaches in the sense of Hamby, position coaches, wherever you're looking at, Kitley with the quarterbacks, whatever it is, that won't start until you actually get into fall camp or in spring camp, excuse me. And then you have a set number of practices leading up to your spring game. And then you have a set number of hours you can, you know, really be around the guys if you're a coach during the summer. And then fall camp, obviously, you can just be around them all the time, that kind of deal. But that's really what the NCAA does is crack down on how much time you can be around players. So your strength coach is the most important. So to answer your question, yeah, if you think you can go get a better guy, yeah, absolutely. It's 100% okay at this time to do it. I'd rather you do it now than during the middle of spring camp. I'd rather you do it now than in the middle of summer where you've already been through spring camp and some of those guys have already tried to make some adjustments from the coaching that Hamby had. Again, I never like a guy getting fired or relieved of his job, whatever it is. I, I don't know the terminology that they're actually using here um, from that regard. But especially when it comes down to it, he's an alum, right? I mean, Hamby went to Texas Tech. So I think the timing of it is interesting in the sense of it didn't happen right after the season, but it makes sense from the standpoint of, okay, they did this because of the second year of his contract and that buyout going down precipitously after that all right let me know in the chat where y'all are watching from we got ty we appreciate you ty tuning in we've got edmund oklahoma it's a good thing he is gone we need a solid offensive line yeah I, it's very interesting to hear some of the opinions about hamby um you know from my standpoint yeah he probably you know could have done a little bit better of a job i think you could say that a lot um about a lot of guys on the coaching staff um you know really any coaching staff in america but I also think from a talent standpoint and a depth standpoint and just really injuries. I mean, the offensive line was just, man, they got, they got hoed last year on a lot of the injuries, man. Um, and so now you've got talent. We'll look at it here in just a minute in terms of the two deep, but I need y'all to like the video before we got it right now in terms of how many likes we have on the video. And uh, we need to get those numbers up, people. We need to get the numbers. Up. I think we can at least get it to around that you know, 
20 range right now. I see how many people are watching in here right now. Help me out. Get 20 likes on there, and we'll go from there. Uh, let's see. We got Fort Collins in here ready for that uh, 2025 matchup. Yeah, that'll be a lot of fun. Coach Prime headed out to uh, Texas Tech second weekend of November. I will be hopefully in Lubbock. My wife is listening right now. I hope that that's the case. I hope we're in Lubbock for that game. That game's going to be a ton of fun. Um, and then Garrett says, hearing B-ball team is dealing with the flu tonight. Open overcome it. Yeah, they've got, uh, from a basketball standpoint, real quick, they got Baylor tonight um, here in a couple of, uh, well, not too long. I mean, about hour and 15 minutes. Um, yeah, I, from what I have heard and what I've been told around people that know the program a little bit better than I do and are there day in and day out, there's more than a handful of guys trying to battle through this um, in terms of the flu bug. And really the past few days have been the priority has been rest, hydration, and just trying to get better. They've done you know, a few walkthroughs, maybe a little bit more for some other guys that aren't feeling under the weather. But mostly it's been focused on, hey, getting hydrated, getting to feel better. That way they can really focus on potentially beating Baylor tonight. And then worst case scenario, if you do lose at Baylor, you feel a lot better going into that home matchup against UCF because I don't think people are talking about it enough in the sense that, hey, man, like, there's quite a few people under the weather. I mean, you could noticeably tell it from Pop. I mean, Warren was sick at halftime coming out of there as well. You had a couple other guys feeling under the weather, not as bad as Lamar, who missed the game due to illness. But you saw Matt Brower in a mask. He was under the weather as well as a couple other coaches. So, I mean, it is what it is on that front. But it'll be a tough test tonight for Texas Tech and Foster Pavilion there in Waco with the camera angle that I can only imagine God is watching from. I mean, they got to change the camera angle. Camera angle is awful. I mean, it's 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 awful. I mean, I get it's year one, but please, I, I don't need to look like I'm watching this game from the Empire State Building. I mean, it, it's uh, it's 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 really bad. Please change it, Baylor. Um, but I think we need to hop into this now. I I have a way too early Texas Tech offensive line too deep, and I want to preface something here. It is extremely difficult at this current moment to project who some of these backups are. But I think these some of these backups are the more talented guys. And if you remember, Joey McGuire has said multiple times this offseason, specifically when it comes to the offensive line, that they're going to mix and match places, right? There's a certain number of guys that are locked in, and you'll know who those guys are. There's really four of them for Texas Tech that I think are, well, actually really only three, um, if you ask me right now, uh, potentially because you don't know where the other one's going to play just because of one of the positions and who steps up. If not, you have to move somebody out there. But it's going to be interesting in this regard, just from the standpoint of, hey, okay, I think this group for Texas Tech is extremely talented. And here it is. The early projected 2024 Texas Tech offensive line, too deep depth chart. Man, I really went to work in Canva for you guys for this. Um, just kidding. But this is kind of where I'm at right now. You got left tackle, left guard, center, right guard, right tackle. When you look at everything right here, I think that the locks, in my opinion, and when I say lock, I say it outside of three positions loosely. I think it's a given that your guards are who they are at this point. I think Scurry is going to be your left guard. I think Carter is going to be your right guard. Um, center. As of right now, I'm going to project Caleb Rogers to be that guy. Now, I say right now because let's just say shit hits the fan at left tackle and Rodriguez and Porcher just don't live up to anything, right? You got to move Ty Buchanan over back to left tackle and Rogers to right tackle, and then you got Wilson at center. I think that you probably do some shuffling like that. I don't think that'll be the case at all. I think if you go from left to right, if you ask me who I think the starting offensive line is for Texas Tech, against Abilene Christian on August 31st, kickoff TBD, at least at this point, as far as I know, you got Rodriguez, Scurry, Rogers, Carter, and then Ty at right tackle. That's what I think happens if you were Texas Tech, okay? Then you look at the guys in terms of the depth here. And by the way, I think this is the best depth Texas Tech has had in quite a long time. I really do, because you're talking about multiple guys here that I think can play at a high level that are young. You see it right there. You got Fatigue, redshirt freshman. Sill, redshirt freshman. Carr, redshirt freshman. Wilson, 
sophomore. Rodriguez, a guy that was wanted by some of the biggest universities in the country and some of the best at that, including the likes of Georgia, he has a chance to be your starting left tackle or Porcher to transfer from Middle Tennessee State. Now, overall, you've got multiple guys that can come in here. And I know I don't have guys like, you know, Holton Hendricks or Ellis Davis. Ellis Davis, by the way, will not show up to campus until summer. So there's that. But this is kind of where I'm at right now if you're Texas Tech from the standpoint of I think Rodriguez presents to you at the left tackle spot the highest upside. I think that guy is raw, but he has all the tools to be a really good left tackle. Will it click early at Texas Tech? He's making a hell of a jump, people. I mean, a hell of a jump from the JUCO ranks to Power 5 football. I guess technically Power 4. My apologies, Pac-12 fans. Then you got Vinny Skirty. A guy that was one of the best guards in the MAC, protected MAC player of the year, now the Baylor quarterback, and Daquan Finn. He's going to be your starting left guard. He does not come here as a senior if he does not have a really, really good chance, if you know what I mean, to start at left guard. Then center, Caleb Rogers. That may surprise some people that aren't haven't been paying attention to what Joey McGuire has said. Caleb Rogers came back for his super senior year after getting some really feedback from the NFL saying, hey, we want to see what he looks like playing inside. Caleb Rogers has only ever really played left tackle and right tackle at Texas Tech. I would suspect he's your starting center because you went out and got a guy like Davon Carter, who is a super senior coming in from Memphis that has been one of the best right guards in all of college football if you look at pro football focus in their grading. I mean, he was easily the best lineman at his respective position in his conference last year at Memphis. So that's the guy at right guard. And then we know about Ty Buchanan. I mean, he was a stabilizing force for Texas Tech at a pivotal time at left tackle. Could he improve? Yeah, I think so. But I think he's going to be much more comfortable on the right side, and I project him to be the starting right tackle. Now, I will say this. When it comes to the tackle spots, it would not surprise me if these are flipped. But right now, this is where I'm going, and I think this is the way that the coaches are thinking going into fall camp with Ty, that he will be the starting right tackle. But if needed, he can flip over to left tackle, and maybe one of these guys like Carr, Rodriguez, Porcher, another other couple of guys as well could step up and be the right tackle for Texas Tech. But I do feel really confident right now, and as we know, it's way too early. It says um, in the title right there, um, these are the early projected 2024 Texas Tech offensive line two deep depth chart. It's way too early, people. But this is my best guess right now, and I feel pretty comfortable that you're going to have guys like Scurry, Rogers, Carter, and Buchanan in those four spots right there. That's kind of where I'm at. All right, let me know in the comments if you agree or disagree. I'll give a couple of shout-outs real quick um, to people commenting right now um, and then go from there. But let me know if y'all agree, disagree when it comes down to what I've got on the offensive line there. I know it's way too early. Um, but that's kind of where I'm at in terms of my way of thinking, specifically at the four spots from left guard to the right side. I think those are pretty solid um, locks at this point, but maybe those locks are broken um, when spring camp starts. All right. This from Dustin on Twitter, which, by the way, you can watch on Twitter. Shout out to everybody watching on Twitter right now. This from Dustin. Love Hamby. He was as a player and a coach, but O-line needs work and change can be good. Agreed. Hub City Hoops Talk. How y'all doing? Even Jacob has the flu. Yeah, not ideal. A lot of flu going around right now. I hope everybody's feeling okay. Uh, this from Greg. Who will be the next offensive line coach? Yeah, I think that that's interesting. And I'm not even going to act like I know, Greg. I really don't. Um, in terms of that right there, I think that Texas Tech could go a multitude of ways. But if you ask me which direction I think they should go, which, again, you're here to listen to my opinion, which I truly appreciate. Um I would probably say they go the veteran route. They go get an older guy, maybe not a guy like Caster, that I think in the future will be a really good offensive line coach at the power four level. But I think that they go the experienced route and try and get someone that has proven it at the power four level to be a really good offensive line coach at some respective school at that level. All right, T. Ferg says, predicting Chance McMillan and Pop to shoot the lights out. In Waco tonight. Yeah, Pop's going to have to be big as he always is, it feels like. And I predicted it in the preview video. I think Chance McMillan has a big game and is arguably the most, well, the second most important player for Texas Tech tonight. The most important? You can go watch the preview video over there and hint. 
It's a guard for Texas Tech. And maybe I mentioned him there. Maybe I didn't. Who knows? This from Ty Rogers. That camera angle is terrible. No way they haven't noticed it. Oh, they've noticed it. They've tried to change it. But I think it's just a building flaw at this point. Um, this from Renee. Plus one right now. A win tonight would be great. But if Tech loses Saturday at home, they are in trouble. Yeah, I think Saturday is a must-win game for the Red Raiders. Regardless of the outcome tonight in Waco, you have to beat UCF. Plain and simple. All right. Any questions in terms of what we've got on the O-line here? We've got Ty saying, um, I agree with you this far on the line. T. Ferg says, Rodriguez, Scurry, Rogers, Carter, Porcher at right tackle. You think Ty Buchanan does not start? That is interesting. But I think this is where I'm at right now going into spring. Unless something changes drastically, this is kind of how I feel Texas Tech is viewing it. Obviously, things can change in spring ball. But for me... I would predict this. Rodriguez, Scurry, Rogers, Carter, Ty, those are going to be the starting guys for Texas Tech against Abilene Christian on August 31st. Greg says, Clay McGuire, or apparently the offensive line coach from Kentucky who coached with Kenny Perry at Kansas as possible coach. I don't think anything's out of the uh, question in terms of connections. I think you could go back and look at Joey McGuire's time at Baylor. Maybe they target that offensive line coach. He's currently coaching in college football right now. Maybe he wants to work with Joey McGuire again. Clay McGuire, yes. And then you've got, you know, multiple connections to everybody else on the staff. Obviously, you had the connection with Hamby and Kitley from their time over on top of the hill for the Hilltoppers at Western Kentucky. And that's why he was brought in, not to mention his connection as an alumni. So I don't think anything's off the table for Texas Tech. I just personally think they go the experience route because it's what's most needed right now for Texas Tech. But I will say, um, it's going to be super interesting, and I also want to say this before we end the offensive line talk and get into the Q&A. If y'all want to leave your questions, whether that's about football, men's basketball, whatever it may be, even baseball coming up here in a couple of weeks. I'll be at the openers for Texas Tech um, here in the DFW area when they face off against the likes of the Volunteers of Tennessee. Uh, so that'll be uh, crazy over at Globe Life Field as well. So let me get... Uh, Back to this real quick in terms of switching on over for you guys. Um, I, I do want to say this. If you haven't already, like the video, hit that subscribe button, and turn on that notification bell. It really helps the channel out, and it tells me, hey, y'all like this content. We'll do more lives here on the channel if y'all like the video and hit that subscribe button. And just tell me in the chat, hey, we want more lives, RC. Let me know. All you got to do is ask, and we'll make it happen. I can promise you that. So just let me know in the comments by simply – let me know or lives like the video and we'll go from there as well. Correctly so y'all can laugh at me. Wongle, I don't know. What's the health status of the basketball team tonight? Yeah. Um guys are still fighting through it in terms of the flu. Um, I'm not exactly sure if it is the flu, to be honest. Um, but I do know that. Guys are fighting through it in that regard um, in the sense that, hey, like, yeah, man, they um, you got obviously Lamar missed the game. Pop was under the weather. Warren was under the weather. Um, Joe was under the weather. It's literally affected like multiple, multiple people um, in the sense of not only players, but staff members as well. So um, what I was told really after this last game was the focus these past two days. Um, since they had to travel to Waco yesterday was really just hydration, rest, taking medicine, making sure that they could go through maybe, you know, just a simple walkthrough, getting some shots up, but not really practicing too hard to really focus on health just from the standpoint of they want to get this flu bug over that's in the program right now um, ahead of a week that really could determine your season in a lot of ways. You know, obviously, if you lose to Baylor, it's not ideal, but I mean, right now, in my opinion, I think UCF, that game on Saturday is damn near must win if you're the Red Raiders. Um, but, yeah, let's see. Uh, Greg says, I think you nailed the too early offensive line. Appreciate you turning in, uh, tuning in, Greg. Renee says, I hear Eric Bieniemy is available. Mm. Yeah, I guess Dan Quinn didn't want him as a certain Red Raider. Um, let's see. T. Ferg says, if we can hire a coach who can bring these young men together like McGuire, has then let's go yeah I think it's going to be really interesting to see um where they go on that front I I really think it's going to be an experienced hire maybe even from the high school ranks in sense of like 
it's a high school head coach that McGuire has the utmost faith in, um, or they go for somebody that is experienced in the power four. Now that there is no power five, um, RIP pack 12 again. Uh, but I think that's where they go. I think that that's really what they need to do because I think that this coaching staff knows, um, and the higher levels of it know it's almost put up or shut up time for this offensive line. And some of the young guys you have on it, like they got to show up soon. Um, you got some experience still on there, but here in the next, you know, really 18 months and whatnot, some of these young guys are going to have to step up and really play pivotal roles for the red Raider, red Raiders, excuse me, whether that's, you know, the Holton Hendricks of the world, the Ellis Davis of the world, Carr, Sill, uh, fatigue, whatever it may be, you know, you got to get those guys in there and play meaningful reps and Wilson's got to be in there as well. So, um, it's put up or shut up time. It, it really comes down to that. And for those that missed it, Texas Tech announced yesterday that offensive line coach Stephen Hamby will not return in 2024. Want to give credit to who reported it first. That would be Don Williams over at the Lubbock Avalanche Journal. Remember, Hamby played for Texas Tech from 05 to 08 in the Mike Leach era. And according to reports in the Lubbock AJ, Hamby was terminated without cause. So there's that. They're going to have to pay him. And the reason timing wise, it sounds like that it went down yesterday was because the second year of Hamby's contract started and that just nosedived the buyout for Texas Tech. And they wanted to save a little bit of money. So it does make some sense in that regard. All right, let's get to some more here. John, maybe I'll see you at the baseball showcase. John, let me know, man. I'll be there all three days with uh, my buddy, Mike. We try and go every year that Texas Tech is there. So definitely just reach out and I'll uh, tell people where I'm at. All you got to do is follow me on Twitter and uh, I'll post it in the community tab here where I'm sitting over at Globe Life Field to watch Texas Tech baseball. Uh, Warren asks, is Lamar active tonight? I would assume so, but also at the same time, I'm not ruling anything out right now in the sense of this illness. It's It feels like it's hitting people really, really hard and I'm not here to judge in any regard on that, but um, if I had to guess, I'd say yes, but don't be surprised if he's not. And if he's not, you're going to see a lot of Chance McMillan tonight and maybe even just trying to get out and transition and have guys like, I think that there's a possibility tonight. I know this is a little bit going off track that you could see a lineup with Warren Washington and Robert Jennings. Would I like to see it? No, but Baylor presents rebounding um, issues for other teams and Texas Tech has obviously struggled rebounding. So maybe you get another tall guy in there and you go the the big route, but um, yeah, I, I I would say it's TBD on Lamar right now, to be honest. Uh, Ty, maybe Cliff will pull out of Washington and come back to coach the whole line. Sure seems like uh, Cl yeah, yeah. Um, I will say I caught wind that he was leaving the Raiders uh, a little bit before the news drop, and the Raiders sounded pretty shady, man. It sounded pretty shady. They sounded like they had a deal done in terms of Cliff and him went in there, and then they kind of were like, oh, no, 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 no. We don't want to do that. We only want to give you two years. And Cliff was like, literally one of my only things that I wanted was a three-year deal. So he backed out, and Dan Quinn was like, hell yeah, man, we'll do it. Um, and now you could potentially have Caleb Williams, uh, Cowboys fans, in your division for who knows how long, because I think that that's probably what happens. I think the commanders get Caleb Williams, if you ask me today. This from Ronald Shaw. Ronald, that is a great first name. Um, I don't use mine, but I appreciate you using yours, sir. Uh, what about Warren Washington's back issue? Yeah, he should be good to go. The reason that he came out late at halftime was just because he was sick, um, from what I understand. Um, so, yeah, that's kind of how I understand it. Maybe there's a little bit more to it, but it sounds like it was the flu thing, and he was trying to get you know a little bit more fluids in him and everything like that. Obviously, the back issue has been a little bit of an issue for Warren, um, really, over the past couple of weeks, even before the flu. But I think that that's really what it was more so um, in this past game for the Red Raiders. Um, T. Ferg, the official pregame live chat. RC, nice job again. Appreciate you tuning in. And if you haven't already, this is the perfect time to plug one more time. Like the damn video. If you want more of these lives here throughout really the year, we'll be doing some during the um, sp well, spring, summer, obviously the fall. We might even do this for you guys. This this one I feel confident in. So. Everybody in here right now um, get a little bit of a heads up. I will be going live on Selection Sunday, um, getting live instant reaction to Texas Tech and where I think, well, not even where I think they end up in the bracket, wherever the hell they end up in the bracket. I'll be crossing my fingers just like you guys. It's in the South region, so come hang out with me um, and really talk Texas Tech men's basketball in real time. We'll have it right there, right here 
on the most engaging and most subscribed to Texas Tech community here on YouTube in the Back to 12 podcast channel. Easiest way to stay in the know, like the video and subscribe. All right, let's see this from Extra. Will we get some solid basketball transfers with our success? Oh, yeah. Yeah, man. I think um, people are liking what's going on here. Um, and, and again, I, I think people got to be realistic with it, right? Um, in the sense of if Texas Tech wins just one more game this year, they already passed their win total for last year. So that's pretty big. Um, and they could do it easily this week. Well, not easily. It's the Big 12, right? But uh, they have a chance to do it this week again. So that's big. Uh, but yeah, I think basketball will have a very good opportunity to land some guys, uh, maybe not in the high school ranks, but you did mention transfers. I think transfers is where they're going to go uh, for this cycle and then really prioritize the high school ranks really starting in 2025. And the guy to know there is Buff. I mean, Kellen Buffington is an absolute rock star on the recruiting trail. All right, this from Chris. RC, more lives. Hate to see Coach Hamby go, but I'm excited to see who he brings in as a replacement. Appreciate you tuning in, Chris. And yeah, it'll be interesting. I, again, I, I think that they go the experience route, but we'll probably know here in the not-too-distant future unless, well, it's Coach Prime who guaranteed that they would name a coordinator like two weeks ago, and they haven't done that yet. Um, let's see. Renee says, I sure hope so. Tech has top-notch facilities, NIL, and a solid coach. Excited to see how things go after a full year of recruiting. Yeah, I... I Listen, I, I'm not too worried about Texas Tech men's basketball long term when you got a guy like Grant McCaslin and he put together a hell of a staff, well-respected staff. I know a lot of people questioned it. I even questioned some of it um, in terms of the guys they targeted. But after looking into it a little bit more and actually talking to some of those guys, they got it, man. They got a good one um, from top to bottom in terms of the coaching staff. This from Greg. I still think Tech needs to get to 10 conference wins to get into the NCAA tournament. I don't think you got to get 10. I think. Eight is a good number. I mean, Big 12 is the best league in America. It's not a debate. And if anybody tells you otherwise, they obviously aren't watching this league night in and night out, like virtually everybody in this chat. I think eight gets you in. Um, now, you may be an 11 seed, but it'll get you in. Um, Warren, FYI, the line just moved from tech plus six and a half to tech plus five in the last five minutes. Yeah, that's not nothing. Um, so it looks like tech probably will be back at full strength, if you ask me, from that regard. You know, one and a half points. That's that's a pretty big line change um, this late in the game. John says the Raiders shady. Nah, yeah. Well, let's not get too into the weeds there, John. Trying to stir the pot and be an instigator. I like it. I like it. Um, let's see. Guns up, Granny. Shout out to it. That's a, that's a fun name. Do we know if any players are sick tonight for Tech or still sick? Yeah, these guys are still sick. Um, will they play? More than likely, yes. Uh, but I wouldn't expect Texas Tech to be over this bug as an entire program until probably later in the week, if not past the UCF game. I mean, we've all had the flu before. It's not fun. It lasts a lot longer than we want it to. Um, so that's what Texas Tech is going through right now. Um, Renee says 10 Big 12 wins. That's a tough task. Yeah, I agree. I think eight gets you in. And you'll even see probably a seven win Big 12 team get in if the strength of schedule is right and they beat certain teams like Kansas State, for example. Kansas State only wins seven games, but they beat, you know, the likes of Kansas like they did last night. And maybe another top 25 team or two. Yeah, they're probably in. Um, that's how I feel about that. All right, this from Jay-Z. My name is Hove. Don't copyright me, YouTube, please. Uh, RC, what do you think of Darion Williams' performance last game, and do you think he sees more minutes? Outside of a fan account, I forget who it is. Maybe it's Darion Williams' daddy. I think that's what it is on Twitter. Free shout-out to them. Um, you're not going to meet – a bigger Darion Williams fan. I, I love Darion Williams game. The best part about Darion Williams game is you don't have to run anything for him. The issue with the last part of your question there um, is I don't know how he can play more minutes unless you play him the entire game. Like you got to give bro a break. So um, I think he's one of those guys that's going to be playing 30 plus minutes a night. And my bold prediction before the season started was he was average 10, five and five. Will he do that? no, but he'll probably average 10, 7, and 3 and shoot 40% from 3. Darion Williams is awesome, man. He's I think by the time he's done playing at Texas Tech, he'll be an all-Big 12 type player. Maybe not an all-Big 12 first teamer, uh, but I think he'll be on an all-Big 12 team. Uh, this from Ty, Big 12 feels like a quad one game each and every night. Yeah, no, each and every week. Yeah, no, I mean, you get two opportunities damn near every week to do it. It's crazy. Um UCF and Cincy will be in that seven range. Hard not to put them in right now. Yeah, 
I think since he's easily a tournament team, but I thought they were before they beat Tech. Uh, the job Wes Miller's done is phenomenal, and they're doing this without one of their best players um, in their Kentucky transfer. So um, they're a really good team. I mean, there's if we're being honest about it in terms of caliber teams that should make the tournament, in terms of NCAA tournament caliber teams in the Big 12, there's probably 12 of them. Now, 12 aren't going to make it, but there's probably 12. The only ones are West Virginia and Oklahoma State, not in that mix. I think everybody else is NCAA tournament caliber, but I think when it's all said and done, you'll probably only get like, I say only, but get 10 in um, when it's all said and done. But the main discussion point as I wrap it up here on the live, so I'm about to go eat some dinner before the game starts. Um, Texas Tech announces offensive line coach Stephen Hamby will not be back in 2024. The Red Raiders will be looking for an offensive line coach. And before I head out, I might as well show you guys one more time. Might as well do it. Let's go ahead and do this on the screen real quick. What are y'all thoughts? Let me know in the comments before you head out. What are your thoughts on my early projected 2024 Texas Tech two deep depth chart from left tackle, left guard, center, right guard, right tackle? Let me know in the comments below if you agree, disagree, if you'd have somebody higher. And most importantly, probably before you head out of here, I need you to do really three things for me, okay? First and foremost, like the video, hit that subscribe button, and leave a comment in the chat. Let me know anything you want me to know about Texas Tech football, men's basketball. Just leave something in the chat. It really goes a long way in terms of helping the channel. I am RC Maxfield reminding you, if you want to stay in the know with the most engaging Texas Tech community here on YouTube, it's really easy to do. All you have to do is hit that subscribe button to stay in the know right here on the Back to 12 podcast channel.